All right, so we have got a fundraising event for the Samuel Ashton Pavilion with special guest Walter Valentine's Jim Hill, the wiener dog. November 16, 2014, 12 uh, p.m. to 4 p.m. So now we've got our text information. We've got our headline information. None of this is formatted yet. This is a terrible design so far. The next thing we're going to do is... Bless you. Bless you. We will go to... Um, this website here and get some images. So this is NASA. NASA's pretty great uh, because they love to give you high quality gigantic images. So we can go and get any pictures of her like this and we can download them pretty large. So if you just go and you want to download them full size, drag it off, put it onto your desktop. Now, here is one of the most important things about InDesign. Where we created this file is on the desktop. I'm going to go on the desktop, make a new folder, and call it EX10 Katarina. That file will go in there, and every file that you use as a reference must be in that folder because it does not automatically embed or save the image. It just saves a link. So it's going to be very important that you are conscious of saving all of your source information. That is a beautiful photograph. We'll grab that one too, okay? And we'll put those in our folder. So let's go in. Now the text, all we did to make a text box was grab the text tool and draw and place some text in there. Adding images in InDesign is almost as simple. I'm gonna hit Command S to save this. Grab the rect uh, rectangle frame tool or any other shape and then decide how big you want this to be. And I think I want a good part of it to be the space shuttle, right? Maybe here and I also want it to bleed. So I'm going to draw this rectangle box um, out to my bleed lines and then go to file place. And in our project folder, grab one of our images and hit open. And the image that we selected was a little bit bigger, which we can tell if we hit this content donut. They call it the image grabber. I prefer content donut. <laughs> so I'm going to grab the content donut and you will see a gold line. That gold line are the actual parameters of the, of the image. In this case, it's gigantic. So all we've got to do is go up to the top and you will see some fitting options. Fill frame proportionally, fill frame content proportionally. So these two are the two I usually use. I'm going to try to do the first one, fill frame proportionally, and it worked pretty perfect. All right? So now what we have to do is put maybe another image in there and start to format the text. If it's a fundraising event, chances are we want this to be quite large because we want to get everybody's attention. Now, since we've done work in Illustrator, we recognize what this little red plus is, so let's make our text box a little bigger. That turned out to be a little bit too big. Fundraising, let's say fundraising event, and let's make Samuel make the event Okay, now these lines here, they are just a little too far apart, so I am going to go to my kerning, which instead of auto, I'm going to direct it to be, whoa, a little, a little bit closer together. And then I'm going to go up to center and center the event. So all of these things that we've been talking about as far as tracking and kerning and size and color, um, the color of the font, the size of the font, uh, the family of the font, all of these things we are going to be um, doing in here. Okay? What about right there where it's clashing with that other information? I don't understand your question. The, see how this close this here? Letters are to oh, well, I haven't formatted this stuff below it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so hold on. I'm just formatting just these two lines right now, and I can always go back make them a little bigger. But I think when you made this, when I, I made this second um, line here much larger, it was just too much space between it. So we have a special guest. I'm 
gonna cut this out and make this its own line because I may want to get a little funky with this. I'm also only using one font family for this so that we are not going to make it too crazy. Special guest, Walter the wiener dog. Make it a little larger. And then I can put that there. Now are these lines like the black edge? The black edge is the paper line. Good okay. question. Black edge is the paper line. Uh, the bleed is the red. So we want to keep everything within that black line. Okay. So at this point, if you're wondering how it looks, just hit W. Oh. And W takes away all of your margin lines, your column lines, your bleed lines, and everything like that. So you can see how it looks. And it's, not, it's coming along. I think we need at least a photograph of our special guest. And it might be cool to put him in a circle and then have text wrap around the circle. You can also... Um, you know, you could you could make this so that it fit into an unusual shape, and we could work with text wrap there. So this is just to get you guys started formatting the text and bringing the images in. If you to frame those images, like put like a black border. Yeah, absolutely. If you um, Command Plus in, you see this image. Right now, it does not have a stroke, but you could give it a stroke. You can give it a dotted stroke. You can give it all sorts of. You've got. You've got option. White diamonds. Um, I would say keep it kind of simple for, for this kind of thing. Now, when you hit W, notice that you're only seeing why I, I might be super careful is because you're only seeing that on two edges, and it might look a little awkward if you can only see it on two edges. But in general, absolutely. And you can change the color by clicking here. Say if you wanted it to be blue. You could make it blue if you wanted to. Right? We will go through how to save swatches and everything. You have uh, some preset swatches, and we can also load swatches and add and all sorts of stuff like that. So right now, what we need to do is go and get an interesting picture of Walter that we can put in maybe a circle up here and then start to wrap some text around it. We can always pick him in bow tie, so that's pretty good. Yeah, well, we'll find something, and then that's we will continue. I don't know if he would be allowed to wear. Hmm? Maybe the bacon one would be good. We'll put a little uh, thing on him, a little astronaut hat. That's what I'm thinking. And then we'll go through, and what we'll do is we will. I'm going to hit W and go back in here. If you wanted to, take the pen tool. Oops, sorry. I must have at one point copied it. If you wanted to, take the pen tool and make a really funky shape. I don't know in this case why you would, but if you wanted to, you could. And then you can go file place and place that inside of there, right? And then grabbing the content donut or content grabber, you could move that around. That would look cool for the long way. I think it would. I think we could definitely do something cool. Now the text you do want to wrap around it. So with the image selected, let me show you one more thing before we finish this video. You go to the window text wrap. Select how you want it to wrap. And very, very simply, you just hit one of these guys. I'm going to have it wrap to both the right and the left sides. And then I can give it a little more cushion. Okay? So if I hit W, you'll see that it wraps right around the shape. So if this was the shape of the shuttle, that you could do very simply in Illustrator and bring over. Instead of using a photograph, you could use an, um, some kind of symbol that you made. But this is the, the essence of the exercise. We'll be placing text, we'll be placing images, and we will be organizing our file and everything that we're using, all of our assets, into one folder. We will continue to talk about how to um, establish character designs, how to change the shapes. We've talked a little bit about text wrap. So this is an overall, also, of what we are doing for this. Sound good? All right.